Hey guys, Shane here, so welcome to this painting tutorial and in this video we're going to take a look at painting German Italian camouflage patterns. So this figure is from Redoux Miniatures and this is one of their 12th HG Normandy sets. So to start off the camo pattern we're going to start working on these overalls and for this we're going to take some Vallejo model colour, German field grey, reflective green and extra dark green. And I'm roughly going to mix these up into a mixture consisting of 60% German field grey, 30% reflective green and 10% extra dark green. And I'm going to mix this up to create a quite an intense or vibrant olive colour. I'm also going to mix a little bit of water into our mixture here just to thin it down ever so slightly. Taking a number two brush, I'm going to start gradually start building up this color. I'm going to do two or three very thin layers to build this up until I get a nice solid color. Now you can see that I've painted his hands and his face already, and I have a full tutorial in the description of this video on how I paint faces. I've also pre primed our model with a little bit of Tamiya surface primer, and I've also added a little bit of a pre shade. Uh, this is an optional step, I just took my airbrush and I uh, took some NATO black and painted in or sprayed in some shadow areas into any areas I felt where shadow would form. Again, this is totally optional. It just gives me an idea where I want to put shadow. So you can see I'm not being too precious with my brush control. I don't mind if I get too much overspill, but I am being very careful not to get onto his hands or his face. And I'm just slowly building this up. And after about two coats, we're gonna start adding our first highlight. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take some Flejo Sunny Skin Tone. And this is gonna be our highlight color. And we're just gonna mix a small amount of Sunny Skin Tone into our pre-existing mixture for the overalls. And mine's kind of dried out a little bit so I have to mix up a new batch but just using the same ratio as before and I'm just going to put in a tiny amount of sunny skin tone at a time I don't want to make this too vibrant too quickly it's better just to work in small amounts of lighter color and then slowly work it up until you get the contrast you want and I'm just going to start sketching out the details so I'm really going to start painting this into most areas. So I'm going to be focusing on the tops of creases, on any area where the material of these overalls is taut, meaning there's no areas where wrinkles or folds can form, so they're going to catch the most light. And by keeping our paint nice and thin, it gives it a slight transparent quality. Therefore, it doesn't go down too starkly on your first coat, so you can kind of gradually work and build your way up and control the transition that way. And you can still see I'm using a number two brush here. I'm not using a fine detail brush just yet. And I'm just working in small areas. I'm tracing the tops of these folds and just going from there. If you're ever unsure where to put a highlight color, if you quite literally hold the model under the light and see um, what's reflecting back at you and then just try to replicate that with your paintbrush. It's a very simple rule of thumb, but it actually works quite well. I'm also starting to um, trace or um, sketch out some of the details so the folds of his pockets some of the stitch work on the seam of his jacket you know where his buttons are now this step does take a little bit to get going but you can kind of see that slowly starting to pop out some of these little details because the sculptor Aradu has done a fantastic job at capturing all these little creases and folds. These, these are fantastically sculpted um, figures and I would strongly recommend them. They're absolutely gorgeous.
So once we're happy with our first highlight, we're going to start moving on to the dark yellow camouflage splotches on the pattern. And for this, we're going back again to Vallejo. And we're going to be taking some of their German ochre, or orange ochre as it's also known as. A little bit of tan yellow. And a small amount of dark sand. I'm going to again mix this up into a mixture of 60% orange ochre, 20% tan yellow and 20% dark sand. And I'm also going to tin it down once more with a little bit of water just to uh, tin it out ever so slightly. So to get the pattern in this to work it's actually not too difficult so basically what you do is you're making somewhat oblong shapes or kind of a shape that has a bit of a root to it so you, you'll do a slight oblong and then you'll kind of paint across to create your pattern So when doing these patterns, it is very important to have a reference photo of the camouflage pattern that you're working on. So I have a photo of this pattern on my phone that I keep referring to as I'm painting, and I'm just um, copying what I see. Now, the Italian camo pattern that was used by the German army was an informal camo pattern, I believe. So a lot of soldiers had their own garments made in this pattern that they made themselves. So they're not all... Um, uniform if you like, They're all, some of them can be quite different, some of them can look like splinter camo, some of them like this are more these oblong shapes, uh, which I'm going for more like this, the oblong, it's just an easier way to paint it I find. Also when we're working with camo, we need to make sure our paint is quite thin. So I don't want to put down too thick of a coat in one go. So I normally just make sure the paint is nice and thin. I don't have a lot of paint on my brush and I just start sketching out. And I start pulling out these little oblong shapes. And normally what I'll do is I'll pick a stitch line or an actual seam line in the uniform that's sculpted in. And then from there I'll paint out these somewhat long or elongated oblong shapes if you like. It's the best way to describe it. You'll also notice I've switched down now to a, one, uh, a number one brush. Just slightly better tip here. Um, again, it gives you a little bit more control. And these brushes I'm using, um, I'll put a link in the description. They're, they're, not they're very inexpensive, these brushes. They're about 15 euro for a big set of them. And they're, they're not actually bad, I have to say. So once we have our main color done, we're gonna add a little bit of English uniform to our mix. And this is gonna be a shadow layer. I'm just going to mix a small amount in and this is going to be um, our shadow layer for our camera flash blotches. And just kind of add um, as much English uniform as you wish. You don't need to put too much in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this into any of the folds or creases that these yellow blotches are on. Now I've gone down to a one zero brush here. And I've thinned down the paint quite a bit. I want to keep this nice and transparent. I don't want to create any ledges in the paint by putting it down too thickly. So keep your paint nice and thin and just work with small amounts of paint on your brush. And I'm just putting this into any areas that the yellow blotches are painted onto that have folds or any areas that have shadow. So with the shading work done on the yellow camo, now we're going to start switching on to the brown camo.
And for this, we're going back to our model color flat brown. And model color German camo black brown. And I'm going to mix these up roughly 50-50. Again, thinning out with a little bit of water just to help with flow and transparency. So the trick with the brown parts of the camo is they do somewhat interlock with the yellow blotches. Now this is not a busy camo uh, pattern, so this does not take up a lot of the green areas like some of the other patterns would do. So again, make sure you keep plenty of green areas between both the yellow and brown blotches. But you'll see how I'll interlock the brown with some of these yellow blotches. And again, using these same oblong shapes, um, I kind of create almost root patterns that they will start in one blotch and kind of move across and interlock with the top or the bottom of a yellow blotch, basically is the best way to describe it. So having a finely tipped brush, I'm using a Filet 2 0 here, or 1 0 should I say. And uh, this is just a fantastic brush for um, painting these type of fine details. You can see that I don't, if there's a seam, like so if you look at the seam here in the trousers, I don't push the, the brown colour past the seam, because they're two separate materials that are sewn together or hemmed together. So I use um, any natural seams that are sculpted into the uh, overalls here as boundaries. I'm trying to keep the patterns somewhat natural. I don't want them too sharp, if you noticed. Everything is somewhat rounded. So you can see this is quite an involved step, but you just work in small sections at a time. Try not to do it in one pass. Just And once you kind of get your head into it, you know, have a good podcast. I've been listening to a lot of good model making podcasts like uh, Plastic Posse and uh, Plastic Mojo. They're fantastic. Um, I'll put links in the description um, of them. And they're well worth listening to. Fantastic guys, fantastic modelers. And they get great guests on. So I'll just listen to something like that in the background. And just let the let the brush do the work then. You're not overly, overly fixating on trying to do this quickly because it's just going to end in disaster. So just you know, let the let the figure paint itself was the best way to describe it. So now I'm going to go back to our mixture here, and I'm taking some of our flat, flat brown, and I'm going to take a much more higher concentration of 
our German camo black brown and this is going to be our shadow uh, layer for our brown camo. I'm really putting quite a bit of shadow brown into this. So a good you know, 60-70% shadow brown into this mixture. And just like we did with the yellow blotches, I'm going to start painting these into any of the areas that it's got recessed detail or creases. So with the shade layer allowed to dry fully, now we're going to start adding some weathering. And for this we're going to use some very simple glazes. So we're going to take some German Camo Beige, again from Filejo. And a little bit of US Olive Drab, again from Model Color by Filejo. And then I'm going to take some of their Glaze Medium. I'm going to put down quite a bit of glaze medium and only a small amount of paint. But this should be a very, very light wash if you like. So a glaze basically is like 70% glaze or thinner medium to pigment. So just a small amount of paint and then into a quite a, a large dollop of glaze medium. Make sure that you thoroughly mix this out though, so make sure it's all uniformed into one colour. So I'm going to take a, a rather large brush, I'm going back to, I think this is a number 3 brush actually, and I'm going to take our camo beige and I'm going to slowly start uh, applying this to the entire uniform. And this is going to create both a unifying glaze that brings all the colours together, it's like a filter if you like, as well as creating a little bit of wear and tear, you know, this is a little bit of sun fading on the uniform, and any of us who've been in, in the army, you know, if you look at some of the, the guys who had older uniforms or hadn't replaced their uniforms for some time, they, they'd be completely sun bleached. Uh, I, I knew guys from my company and all that who had almost like completely faded out DPM patterns. Then I'm going to take our olive drab colour and I'm going to apply this into a little bit more disciplined areas. So I'm just going to focus this near his shoes, his knees, some of the um, insides of his trousers. And again, this is creating a bit of wear and tear, a bit of mud build up, and a little bit of kind of adding a bit more to the shadow and grime of the uniform. But I don't want to kind of go too crazy with this. I've also allowed each layer to dry before I've applied the next glaze, so make sure your glazes are fully dry before you add any more. 
So now we'll move on to painting some of the leather effects and leather items on the uniform. And for this, we're going to make a mixture of Flejo model color flat black, some Flejo model color German camo black brown. I'm going to mix these up roughly 50 50. I'm going to create a very dark or very intense. Oh, it's almost like a lamp black color. It's not quite black, it's not quite brown. I'm also going to use this actually as a intense shadow layer too on some of the uniform. I'm going to take a 2 brush and I'm going to start flowing this color into any of the seam lines or stitch lines on the sculpt. So before we do any of the leather effects, we're going to do this first. So taking the exact same color, again, our uh, flat black and camo black brown mixture. And I'm going to start very carefully painting this into all of the stitch and seam lines and around any of the other details such as the seams of the pockets and um, um, such as the buttons and all that. And this is just going to help make all these details pop. So going back to the same mixture, now we're going to start basing in all our leather details. So I switched up down to a, a number one brush, and now we start working on the white straps, his boots, and his belt. And this is going to be again done with the exact same mixture. And I've tinted down quite, uh, you know, quite well, so it flows quite nicely. And you can see there's a lovely sheen. Um, Flejo flat brown, or sorry, uh, Flejo flat black, should I say, has a lovely satin quality to it. So it's got a natural sheen to it. So it's a fantastic basing color for uh, leather. And I'm gonna use this now just to, to uh, sketch in our leather details.
So now I'm going to start adding our first highlights to our mixture. And we're going back to our sunny skin tone. Now I need tiny amounts of this mixture any one time. So again, less is more. And I'm just going to start working this in onto, for example, the top of the belt. So you know you can see here I'm focusing on the very top of the belt, leaving some of the darker colors, you know, in the middle or down the bottom of the belt, and in between the sections, if you like. I'm also going to focus on uh, some of the centers of the white straps just to make these pop out ever so slightly. It's a quite a subtle highlight, you know, it doesn't pop out immediately, but that's the kind of how we want it. You can push leather effects quite starkly if you want and still get 100% away with it, but I kind of like keeping the leather effects on my uh, on my figures a little bit subdued. So now moving on to some of the metal effects, so I actually use actual true metal I don't like using non-metallic so we're going to use a little bit of uh, Flejo model air metallic black and some Flejo model air steel so these are even though these are airbrushing colors these are actually fantastic for brush painting because they're already pre-tinned so they brush paint extremely well so I'm going to take some of the metallic black and I'm going to add just a small amount, a tiny amount, even that's probably a bit too much, of steel. And this is going to be the base colour for our steel. Now, I think that's a bit too bright, so I might end up adding a little bit more metallic black. Or no, I'm going to add it even brighter, because I was feeling awfully rebellious that day. And this is going to be the base colour for the uh, head of the shovel, that's here in the entrenching tool. Now we have to be immensely careful with metallics. We cannot afford any of this color to get onto any areas we do not want. If we get this onto parts of the uniform that we don't want to be metallic, it's gonna be very difficult to wipe away any of this metallic color without leaving some shiny residue. So just be really careful here. So now moving on to some of the detail painting, and this is going to be focused mostly on the web gear. So the leather reinforcing tabs, I'm just going to use some a flat brown. So sometimes this was untreated hide or untreated leather. So I'm just going to use a straight flat brown for this. I'm also going to take the flat brown and paint in the haft or the handle of his bayonet that's uh, interconnected into his uh, entrenching tool. Then I'm going back to my uh, leather basing mixture and I'm going to start painting in the sheet for the shovel.
Then for the uh, sheet of the bayonet, I'm going to uh, just base this in flat black. And then for the wooden haft of the shovel, I'm just going to take some model color Iraqi sand and just carefully paint this in. This takes about two coats just to build up. Um, often sand colors are a bit transparent, so it takes a coat or two just to get a nice solid color. Then for the bread bag, I'm just going to take some Vallejo Russian uniform and just carefully paint this in. So for the mess tin, I'm going to take some reflective green and just paint this in. And I'm also going to do the same for the cup of the canteen. And the felt of the canteen has just been based with some flat brown as well. So to create some of the texture on the felt of the canteen cover, I'm just going to take some Vallejo German Camo Beige and I'm just going to tin this down somewhat heavily, about maybe 60% water to paint and I'm going to start stippling this on to our brown base coat. I'm also going to mix some of our camo beige into our Russian uniform and create a, a very basic highlight colour for our bread bag. We're going to add some metallic um, chipping to the mess tin and the cup on the canteen. I'm just going to take some straight up Vallejo model air steel. And for this, I'm just going to use a 1C euro brush. And I'm just going to start edging. The, I'm just going to basically trace the edges of some of this detail here just to create a bit of wear and tear. So we're going to start moving on to painting the camouflage pattern onto the helmet. And for this we're going to use some of AK's new gen 3 colours, or 3G colours, and this is their uh, German Panzer 1943-45 set, I think. I can't remember which one it is. I'll put a link in the description to which one it is. And first thing I was going to base the helmet in some field grey. So in Normandy, uh, apparently a lot of soldiers painted their own helmets if they didn't have camouflage covers. So we're going to kind of create our own um, homemade camo, camo helmet if you like. So again, there's plenty of photos online, some of them are original, some of them are repro, and just kind of pick a pattern you like. So we're going to take some Dunkelgelb, again from the AK Gen 3 set. Some of their olive grown, which 
I've misspelled. And the Roth Brown. And my my idea of using these Panzer colors is that they just use whatever colors they had, and they just probably stole some from a uh, a depot that had um, color from or paints for tanks or for Panzers. So just going to first apply this um, Dunkel Gelb as a base coat. I've tinned this down. You can apply this kind of roughly if you like to keep the um, feel grey showing through underneath. It's up to yourself. I'm going to more or less fill in the entire thing with a nice solid coat. Then I'm going to go to our olive green here and I'm going to start painting um, just kind of just radiating to the top of the helmet. I'm just going to So I'm basically just kind of start taking the two colors and making kind of splinters or kind of homemade splinters if you like. They're not perfect. Again, again, this, these would be hand painted with a, a yard brush if you get me. This would have taken an old crappy bit brush for painting the wall or the shed with. Like, they're not going to be taking your art sand brushes to create these with. These were meant to be utilitarian. Once I'm happy with it, I'm just going to take some sponge with a little bit of German camo black brown and just add some chipping, just add a bit of weathering. Now I don't like having the brown spot splotch on the top of the helmet, so I'm actually going to come in with some Dunkel Gel blader on and paint over that and then just weather again on top of it. So to add some of the wood effects for our entrenching tool, we're just going to take some artist oils. So I'm going to use some 502 Shadow Brown and I'm going to turn this into a wash. So again, I'm going to put quite a bit of white spirit into this to create a, a nice light wash. And it's just going to add a bit of grime. It's going to take some of that reflective sheen out and it's going to unify everything. I'm also going to give it to the bread bag. I've more or less applied it to most of the web gear. With I also I'm going to apply this wash to the ammo belt. So I painted the ammo belt basically with the metallic black and then just came in with a little bit of brass and just caught the, the back of the belt just to create some of the, uh, the cartridges. And now I'm just going to take some artist's burnt umber and then just with a brush, that's uh, a nice clean brush, I'm going to start stippling that to create a nice simple wood uh, grain pattern. So with the web gear fully allowed to dry, now it's time to seal the model with a little bit of matte varnish. But before we do that, I'm just going to show you the Refize helmet. So I, I went in in the end and removed that, uh, the brown splotch on the top of the helmet because I just didn't like it. And I just painted over that with Dunkel Gelb. And weathered it in exactly the same way, put the wash back over the helmet. And now I'm going to hit it with a little bit of Flejo Premium Matte Varnish. And this is going to be our sealing layer. It's just going to knock back any of that kind of satin sheen that sometimes flail colors have and it's just going to make everything a little bit more realistic as well as protecting our model. The MG42 was also painted by just using um, a metallic black base color and then just a few um, slight highlights and washes. And there you have it. So there is our Panzer Grenadier all ready for the Normandy Bocage. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed it. it was a, this was actually a lovely model to paint. Uh, Redoo Miniatures do some absolutely gorgeous stuff. So looking really forward to seeing what they have in store. Um, I'll put a link in their, to their website in this description if you want to check them out. Now, I, I'm not affiliated to them, but I just think they're a really nice company. Guys, I hope you found this interesting. Tune in in the next few weeks where we're going to be making a very simple vignette and diorama base for this figure and the other figure that we did in the set a few months back. So again, guys, thank you so much. I have been Shane. Uh, thank you for watching, and uh, I'll catch you in the next video. Stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.